selfish sometimes that you could just hop in a hot air balloon, sail away into the sunset, and leave all your problems behind. Well, I can't really help you with that. <laughs> Um, but what I can do is help you with this next painting tutorial. Um, give you a little brain break, maybe mentally, emotionally, just kind of float away a little bit into your creative side. So let's get started. In this tutorial, you need three brushes. I use a small, medium, and large brush. I just grabbed something out of the pile and that's what I'm using today, as well as these colors. So today I'm going to be using this canvas. As you can see, I have a little bit of blue on there already, so I'm going to be uh, working with that. That is the same blue that I'll be using, which is the peacock blue. Okay, so you might have noticed I'm using a slightly smaller canvas today. Um, this is a 11 by 14 size canvas. I got it at the Dava store, one of my favorite stores. Um, I don't usually use these types of canvases, like I don't usually use this size or um, this brand of canvas, but um, I had a few sitting around in my closet, so I thought, well, I better try using it today. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so what we're going to do is start with that blue, and we're going to be doing the sky and sea first. Okay, so I'm going to start with the C part, portion of this because I want that to dry a little bit while I'm working on the sky and the sky requires a lot more blending. So it's good to have it a little bit wet and then we don't have to worry about the C because it will be drying while we're working on the sky. Okay, so if it boggles the brain a little bit too much to paint the sky this way and then uh, flip it over, you can most definitely paint this way first um, if that helps you. But I'm gonna hold it up here because I just like painting from the top down. And speaking of which, um, maybe about that far, not quite halfway, um, but some of it is going to be covered um, with that mountainscape anyway. But anyway, so about a third to a half down, okay, is probably about where you want to paint that blue.
Okay, so I made the conscious choice to paint the sides. I know some of you may have seen my paint parties, or paint parties, my paintings, and my paint parties are on YouTube. And sometimes I choose not to paint the sides. Uh, it's just personal preference, um, same for yourselves. But I would say as you go, make sure you paint your sides because as we do blending, if there's some blending that has to be done on the side, you'll wanna do that right away um, as soon as you can. So yeah, it, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice when you wanna hang these up and um, the sides match the front as well. Um, it just makes it look more, more uniform. Sometimes I leave the sides and paint them a solid color after, kind of like a frame. Um, that might be something that you want to try as well, but if you're going to be painting the sides uh, just every now and then, um, check the sides and, and make sure that you do that. Okay, so now while that dries, um, some of you might be using an easel so this will be a little bit maybe easier, but I'm going to be holding it from here for myself. Um, if it's a little bit too difficult or you don't or you'd have to set this down in an easel, I would suggest getting out a blow dryer and uh, drying that off before you move on to um, doing the sky part. Okay, so for me, like I can hold it here and I'm just gonna let that dry uh, naturally. And I'm gonna get some more blue. And same idea with the top. So we're going to go even quite a bit less um, down here there's quite a bit for the sea because some of this will be the mountains and some of that uh, pretty sunset uh, stuff but this part um, only the top part maybe maybe a quarter of the canvas should be blue so same as the bottom we're gonna paint uh, okay, from about here up and we're not gonna worry too much about this solid line um, being, being a solid line because we're going to be doing a lot of blending um, down here. It's more up here that you want to worry about it being um, more solid and you might have to add uh, an extra layer on top if you want it to be that um, deeper blue up here. Um, but yeah, let that part dry. And we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so just for now, um, get some blue on that brush and we're going to paint um, the top part of this, the solid blue color.
So now your painting should look a little bit like this. So you have your, your C started and also that solid blue for the sky on top, okay? So now while the top is still a little bit wet, we're going to add some paint, uh, some red paint to this part and then we're gonna do a little bit of blending um, with the red into some of that blue, okay? So we'll get a little bit of that red and I'm using the Christmas red. It's a nice red. Um, it's not too dark and not too, too light or, or bright colored either. Um, it's just really nice kind of sharp, sort of a cherry red, I guess you could describe it. Okay, so get some nice red streaks going. too worried about um, getting some solid thick lines down here because we're going to be adding a lot of yellow as well. Oh, I picked up some of that blue. Just blend that out a little bit. Okay, so in this portion, if you just want to like wipe your brush off, that's fine. Um, if you want to add more red after the yellow has been added, that's okay. So we can just leave um, this part kind of like that, kind of grainy. Okay, so now we want to work up here, and I'm going to push it right up into the blue, see that there? I'm just going to lightly blend my brush stroking paint up into the blue, not touching the very top because we want to leave that the solid blue, at least I do. And then we're going to bring it down a little bit as well. Okay, like so. I think that's looking quite pretty. Now we don't want to blend everything um, together. Like here, for example, I really like how some of that red is still showing through um, in this area. So. I'm gonna try not to touch that too much. There we go. So we don't need to go all the way across either with our brush, even if we just do like a little bit of blending in one area, one spot, and then just kind of leaving it, that's fine. Okay, a little bit more red. I wanna cover this spot a little bit. And just wipe off my brush down here. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to start making some orange colors. Oh, get my hair stuck in the painting. <laughs> um, I'm going to be using some yellow. I have daffodil yellow. A little bit of that on the plate and again what I usually say about paint on the plate is that you can just put a little bit so that you save your paints um, because then if you don't put a huge blob on there and then you don't use it then it's just kind of wasted and then you waste your money and it's not very fun but if you just put a little bit you can always put a little bit more on your plate after okay so now I, ha I just use the same dirty brush like I have that red on there Still, I'm not worried about that because I'm making orange, so I grabbed some yellow with that same brush. And I'm still using the large brush that I had. Okay, so I'm gonna start here because that's kind of where the sunshine is and then work its way out. And I'm gonna put a little couple, oops, quite big, couple streaks up here. And this is where you can do a lot of experimenting to see what uh, works for you, what you like. Um, some people like having just like the straight yellow colors and, and uh, 
don't want to blend too much, so then you would just put a little bit on. Um, I like personally having like the brighter colors in the middle for where the sunshine is, and then um, having the little random bits of yellow show up, like say here. Just lightly run my brush over top of it. So it's kind of like a wispy cloud that's just picked up some of that color, okay? So just work on it. Um, some This is where the happy little accidents happen sometimes. Um, so say you're gonna, okay, well I'm just gonna blend it a little bit here and then, oh look, I made purple. I made kind of this fuchsia. No, it's kind of lilac there. Oh. And also that's the other thing too, if you mix your yellow too much with the blue, green is gonna happen. So just be careful and be aware of that. But um, yeah, just have fun with it and uh, develop your sunset the way the way you would like. And that's what's nice about uh, sunset um, landscapes is there's no real wrong way of painting because you see all kinds of sunsets. You see things that, I know the other night I saw a sunset and I go, I went, you know, if I tried to paint that, I don't know if anybody would believe me that that was a sunset. <laughs> it just seems kind of random. Like the one picture I have on Instagram where there was this random cloud that poked up in front of the sun and there was this huge uh, shadow that was cast into the sky. And I thought, you know, if I painted that, people would look at me like I'm nuts. <laughs> but um, it was quite beautiful. And so anyway, long story short, you can paint your sunset any way that you want and it is okay. It is more than okay. It's just perfect. And this is where you get to show a lot of personality, a lot of your own personality. Okay, it's getting a little too busy. Think on this side. And don't forget every now and then to take a step back and uh, see what you've what you've done and if you need to add a little bit more paint okay like for example I feel like this is getting a little bit too solid so I'm gonna go in with my brush and grab some more um, red and bring some red back in back into the scene okay and I think that's not too bad for a base So once this dries, then you can add a little bit more if you want, but for sure we're going to be adding more of that uh, sunshine in the middle. So this is just the beginning. So at this point, you're gonna to wanna to get out your blow dryer and uh, go over that quickly. Um, or as some of you are aware of the little canvas dance, so you could do that as well. 
<laughs> uh, you may have seen me do that in my previous video. Um, also, if you've attended my paint parties, you know all about the canvas dance. So, you can go ahead and give that a shake or get out your blow dryer. a really good opportunity for you to step away and uh, grab a coffee or tea or whatever and have a little break. Um, that's what we like to do at the paint parties if we're at a stage like this where we're getting ready for more detail work. Um, we like to take a break, do some stretches, um, have a coffee, little visit, whatever. Okay, and then mine is almost dry, but uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll get to doing our mountains next. Okay, so now we are ready for our mountains. So we're going to um, set these colors aside, wash our brushes if we need to, if we haven't done so already. Okay, so don't throw away your plates or wash off your paint just yet, because we're going to need these colors to uh, work in some of the sunset reflections on the water later, but we're gonna get our mountains started, okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm using black for that uh, mountain silhouette. Okay, a little bit on the plate. And I'm going to be using my medium size brush for that. Okay, so what I would suggest is figuring out where you want your hills and making sort of an outline, okay? So say I want my one mountain to start up here. And what I think looks really pretty is if it gets taller and then dips down into where that sunset's going to be. Okay, so just kind of like that. And especially if you have a problem spot where you don't think it looks as good, then you can put your hills there. Okay, and I'm going to also make a couple of rolling sort of hill shapes here. Okay, and try not to go too high. Um, this is why we left this area, um, because I'm going to make the mountains come down to about here, and then we can paint our, our line at the bottom as well. Oops, went a little bit too far, but that's okay. I'll just paint that in. Okay, so make your mountain shape, make the line across, try to make it as straight as you can, and uh, then fill it in with black.
Okay, so now that we've finished our mountains, looking pretty nice. Uh, we're gonna let that dry. But if you're feeling uh, brave, you could uh, start on the bottom part. Just be very careful not to get too close to these, to these guys. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to grab with my small my small brush, and I'm going to add in a few lines. Okay, so starting off with red, and I'm not going to get right up against the mountain there, but starting with some red, I'm just letting my brush kind of wipe, swipe across, and then wipe off some of the excess paint, like that. Okay, so I'm going to add a few lines like that with the red and the yellow and maybe blend them a little bit together. And just wipe off, like that. Okay, so we're going to be adding a little bit more blue. So if it's too solid, like we're gonna swipe the blue in to it to blend it to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, but for now, like I picked up um, yellow and red, for example, and swipe across. Larger lines towards the top, and then have them become a little bit shorter near the bottom. Like that. Okay? So, not too solid, not too much paint, just swiping very lightly. to get the lightest um, colors right close to the mountain but of course right now it might still be a little bit wet so if you're more comfortable of course go ahead and let that dry before you um, paint too close to the mountain it is getting pretty close to dry now but if you want to go that extra step and blow dry it you go right ahead And I'm gonna take some little bit of red and I just kind of swipe off, swipe my brush up like that. I know it doesn't look very good like that right now, but once we blend in some of that blue, we'll look much better. Okay, so speaking of the blue, now that I'm finished putting on some of that color, I'm going to go in with my blue now. So I just washed off my uh, larger brush. You could use the medium brush as well. It doesn't uh, really matter. It's personal preference, I guess. So I'm going to take the brush and load it up with blue after I cleaned it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, paint the corners first near the bottom because I want that to be a solid blue color and same with the, the bottom here and if you want you can also paint the bottom as well now would be the time oh yeah if you're painting your sides make sure you are keeping up with that as well friendly reminder okay so I'm gonna paint down here and same thing on the other side paint the corner and some at the bottom okay now I'm going to be painting and blending some of that red into the side. Okay. So let me get kind of a darker color over here, kind of like a shadow to the mountain. Okay, and same with the other side with blue. I'm going to be mixing it in nicely with that red on the, those red parts on the outside of the look. Not in the center. Okay, see how there's like just that little subtle shadow? That's kind of what I'm going for here. 
a little bit of blue on the medium brush. And I'm gonna go over in between some of these lines. I don't want to completely take away what I've done here, but I do want it to be a little bit more spaced out. So I'm painting kind of in between and also, also blending out some of these areas because they're just a little bit too strong. yellow and just swipe along the tops of some of those ripples okay just really loading it up onto the tip of the brush and then swiping just very lightly here and there so it's like the light is catching the top part of those waves okay so say that um, this part this red is a wave okay so you're gonna load up your brush and is this where I said oh, yeah. just lightly you make a couple swipes have it so that the yellow is sitting on top of that that wave and it kind of brings it off the page because it has that shadow that dark part underneath so it does look like it's the top of that that particular wave same as over here very light. Okay, and we're going to go in more with um, some white later, so don't fret too much about it. And if your mountain is dry and you're feeling kind of brave, then you can put some um, yellow there. And you can just kind of dot along the top if it's too scary to just do swipes you can just kind of dot, dot your brush along the top along the edge there and that goes for down here too you can do the same technique so that's the brush here i'm going to start the sun shape so we're going to take some more yellow and then these paints want to cooperate with me. <laughs> That's what I get for um, trying to use the leftovers for my paint uh, videos. <laughs> but I don't want to waste it. Okay, finally got some yellow. Onto the medium brush. Okay, so I'm going to swoop down this area here okay and make some swipes and make a few swipes here now if you're totally happy with the way your background looks you don't want the sunshine poking up like this that is totally fine it's whatever works for your painting Gonna swipe along to make kind of that circle shape. Okay. And I'm gonna take a little bit of water. I know this water isn't super clean. I should change it, but I'm not going to. Um, yeah, so then you get kind of that more hazy, hazy sun, sun streaks. And same with this um, area in here with my brush with kind of that watery yellow mixture. I'm just going to go along some of this area and make little highlights. A 
along the mountain and make a few little highlights here to kind of give the idea that there's a valley. Um, there's some dimension there. And if you have a hard time seeing it, like you're putting it on, you're like, what, does this even look good? Does this even make sense? <laughs> um, take a step back and see with my painting, like, um, I need to take a little step back and look at it and think, oh, okay, okay, I can see where I'm going, I can see, okay, maybe I need to fix this up, whatever. <laughs> so, do that from time to time, take a step back away from the, the canvas and uh, get some perspective. Know, or take a picture of it with your phone that's always like the best thing after you're done any of these projects please take a picture of it with your phone first and look at it because quite often we're looking at it like this and we know where all of the mistakes are and it can be quite distressing to us so that's my advice and that's been my advice and has been has worked very well uh, for paint parties is if people are like oh I don't know if I like this or not. Um, they take a picture of it and more often than not they're like, oh well, that's actually not bad. <laughs> so that's my that's my tip is to take a picture for sure. And even halfway through if you need to take a picture just to get some perspective. Uh, it's a good, a good plan. Okay. So I'm gonna let the yellow part dry and if you've swiped up here please let that dry first um, but while the water part and the center of the sunshine is drying I'm gonna start with my hot air balloons okay so you can grab um, your small brush and some black paint and if you're really nervous about the shape of the hot air balloon, um, what I've done before is I've done a graphite transfer. So you print off a picture or a shape, um, shape of a hot air balloon, and you use pencil and use the graphite on the back, and then you press the graphite side down onto your painting, and then go over the paper with a pencil, and it will transfer the graphite for you. Um, you can get tracing paper. You, what I've done too is I've actually cut out little shapes and I've put them on the painting and then drew in pencil over top of it and then colored it in. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is just fine. It's not cheating. <laughs> you still have to paint it. So if that helps you, absolutely go for it. Okay, so I'm going to do two hot air balloons. And probably over here will be the larger size. I like to you do the little dome part first. And then have that come down here. Maybe fill that in a little. Okay. Do the little basket underneath, and the basket part is just like a little stroke, small stroke, like that. And um, if you want to make the ropes visible, I would suggest taking your brush and wiping both sides so that it's more flat, and just doing a little press like that, just a little tiny press to make little ropes. I think that's pretty good. Okay, I will focus in so you guys can watch me do the second one.
Okay, so while our little balloons dry, we're going to be doing a little bit more highlighting and helping that sun along. So if you want to put a little bit of white onto your plate, and I've washed off my small brush, so that's what I'm going to be using for the highlighting. Okay, so you, once you have your yellow and white mixed a little bit, then you can start adding a little bit to the center and the bottom of the sun. Whoa, it's quite bright, there we go. Just like that. Okay, and just, I'm going to just add a few swipes. I'm not gonna make necessarily a circle shape, but just getting the idea. And just practice doing, you can do a little bit of blending. And if you need to add a little bit of water to blend, if it's a little bit easier, um, go ahead and do that. I'm going to be going over some of these little highlighting spots on the mountain um, just now that I, they've dried I can see that some spots need a little bit of touching up Okay, so with that as well, I'm going to make a few streaks with that yellow onto the balloons. From the bottom up and then just kind of swipe and then let go, swipe, let go. Like so. This one I can blend in a little bit. And you want the strongest highlight to be where um, it's facing the sun. So for this one, little, oops, little swipe, let go, swipe, bring the brush up, swipe, swipe. We'll do a couple more little swipes just so that one highlight doesn't look all by itself. And that's a little bit better. And just a couple small swipes along, or even just one, along the baskets. take some time just to check over like I noticed here it's just looking a little bit disengaged and that's better I just needed to add a little bit of blue and so that's what you want to do is again take that step back and uh, check to see what needs to be done just gonna add a little bit of blue swipes there I think it looks better okay and same with on the top here I'm just gonna add a couple swipes of blue Oops, just to make that top part a little bit more solid. And now just for fun, if you would like to add a couple of little stars, now would be the time. So I'm using my small brush and giving it a little bit of a twirl in the white. 
And you can use a flat brush for this as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be a round brush. Um, I would just use the corner of the flat brush. And I'm gonna put my stars. I'm just going to add like one, two, three, on that side, just a few little dots, okay? And same as over here. Just a tiny, tiny, like the paint is just barely kissing the canvas. And you'll want to do one or two in the darker areas as well, just to kind of tie it all together. And sometimes I like to put one or two of them kind of close together. It's a little bit more real. Okay, and however many stars you want to put on here is totally up to you. Um, if you think like lots of little clusters, um, whatever you think will look good. And some could be larger, some could be smaller. And I think it just really adds something um, beautiful and dreamy to that painting. Quite beautiful. And if you want, in these darker areas down here, we made it more solid, you could add a couple little stars that are starting to show on the lake. Okay. Is your dreamy floating away from it all hot air balloon painting tutorial I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you this gave you a chance to step away from it all to be able to have some you in the canvas time and uh, that you truly enjoyed yourself um, please like if you did and subscribe so that you will see more of my upcoming tutorials and um, if you're not already please follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Darylin Painting and take me in your creativity. Take me in what you do. Do you crochet, knit, paint, cook, uh, whatever it is that you find creative and that is a creative outlet for you. I would love to see it. I would love to get some inspiration from you as well. Okay, have a great day and stay creative. Bye.